Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Buy or Bust the Game Show, where we choose three cars, find out if they're any good or not, tell you whether or not you should buy or bust them, guess what they sell for at auction, and the facts are sometimes occasionally correct, right Brendan? Yeah, well and today we are picking three cars that we hate. Yeah. And uh, starting off with this 1998 Mitsubishi GTO, except they couldn't call it the GTO in the US because we already had one of those, so they called it the 3000 GT. Yeah, I don't understand this, Brendan, because I think this is one heck of a cool car, so you're gonna have to make your case as to why you don't like the classic 3000. Because it looks like they took an eclipse and it got stung by some bees and just kind of like blew up a little bit. And it's just, it looks overstyled and ugly, and I know, the 3000 GT Owners Club is going to hate me for this, but I know why these of the 90s Japanese classics are the least valuable, because they're ugly. Well, how about this though, Brendan? Active aerodynamics, turbocharging, all-wheel drive, manual transmission. Yeah, if you got that one, but those are worth what? Like $20,000, $25,000 nowadays, if you got a good one? So what's this one? This one's the base model, front-wheel drive, <laughs> automatic yeah. uh, with the non-turbocharged engine, putting out only, what, 220 horsepower? So this is a car that looks fast, looks like it handles really well, not so much. Why don't you pop the hood, we'll show them the engine. Yeah. Now this is a pretty late example of a 3000 GT, um, but as you mentioned, that's the trunk, <laughs> other hood. My bad. You're good, there you go. <laughs> I but, popped something. As you mentioned, this one is probably not the most desirable. So there you see the three liter um, fuel injected transversely mounted V6 powering an automatic in the front wheels. Yeah, and the thing is, is these were actually built on the Mitsubishi Diamante platform. So that front wheel drive where a uh, sedan where Mitsubishi was trying to go more luxurious, they decided to turn that into a sports car. That's right, the Diamante, known worldwide for its handling prowess, exactly right. Yeah, it's like it's like BMW trying to take their their 5 Series or their 7 Series and turning it into a coupe. Oh, wait, I, I, I guess they did do that. But <laughs> those are better than this, at least. Well, let's check out the inside. Let's see what that's like. All right. So it's finally time to sell our Porsche 944 Turbo and we're doing it over at tflbids.com. We recently sold someone's super clean Dakota and this week is this fantastic 2.5 liter turbocharged 944 Turbo in really nice shape. We've had it for some time now. We've had a lot of fun with it, but now time to pass it on to one of you. Check it out over at tflbids.com. Getting inside, you do have a little bit of a cockpit feel, which is nice, but you also get the uh, Diamond Star Motors build quality from back in the 90s. Like, look at this little shift knob. Should be just a nice little shift knob, go right in and out of gears, right? But should it do that? All right, look sir. Look at all, all that right. moving around there. All right, now Mitsubishi in the 90s, I would argue their quality was fairly high. And look at those three gauge pods. Tell me you're not a sucker for gauge pods, Brendan. I am not a sucker for gauge pods. <laughs> that sounds like they watched too much of the Fast and the Furious and said like, Hey, we can do that right from the factory. What about the fighter jet style shifter, Brendan? The fighter jet style shifter that wobbled? No. It, it was. <laughs> what, I mean, what are they trying to do with it? I don't, what's right. wrong with just a regular shifter? I don't know. Enough 3000 GT slander. Let's get this thing on the road. All right, sounds good, Tommy. All right, Brendan, we're in the Mitsubishi. Yeah, and I was trying to see, oh, does the e-brake work? And oh, it's just a, it's a bit flaccid, Tommy. I don't know. Yeah, but check this out. You got power mode there in the transmission. Look at the original Infinity stereo, Brendan. Yeah. This thing's badass. We'll see. All right, let's see what she sounds like. All right. Ooh. Oh, and it's got an exhaust leak. She sounds good, Brendan. Okay. Look at that, no lights on the dash, 80,000 miles. That is surprising, actually. And there's a low mileage. Yeah. And you know, you get this floppy Just, shifter yes, into yes, gear. Yes, and... we get it. <laughs> oh, this thing sounds mean. That's probably uh, exhaust leak. Yeah, it's coming I'm, from the front of the car. I'm, I'm guessing that uh, it's a modified exhaust, but uh, the Nature. owner probably didn't want it to be or, modified. Or maybe a Sawzall modified it. That's right. <laughs> maybe. Now, Brendan, this is not the VR4 high performance forced inducted all-wheel drive model. This is front-wheel drive automatic V6 NA. Yeah, I will. I will say for the day, those things were pretty darn quick. I think I was reading. 4.7 seconds, zero to 60 for the 90s? The issue with the Mitsubishi compared to the Supra, the 300ZX, and the RX-7 is it was heavy. These were heavy, heavy, heavy cars, more of a Grand Tour. Do we have brakes, by the way? 
Oh man, this is a this is like a F1 car. <laughs> All right, let's launch guess, it down. That's a bit generous. <laughs> let's launch it down the, the the strip here. We'll see how she runs. All right, let's do it. Oh, come on, let's go, let's go. Oh, there's the power. Okay. Well, that transmission didn't even want to shift either. I yeah, don't know, yeah. man. Yeah. So it it yeah, it's not a high performance car. Well, it's not only not a high-performance car, it's not a well-built car. It is a well-built car. <laughs> you just don't like the shifter. Everything else works. Well, oh, in the exhaust and the e-brake and the yeah, yeah. the transmission wouldn't shift right. We get it. Yeah. All right, let's park it up, see if we'll buy or bust it. Okay. So, Brendan, now that we've spent some time with the mighty Mitsubishi, is this car going to be a buy or a bust? Well, you know, it, it tries to sell you on the extra power, but... As you can see, it, there's really not much of it. So I'm gonna stick with my guns on this and go with a bust. I just, I wouldn't buy one of these. And the other thing is, is have you ever met a Mitsubishi that ran right? A used Mitsubishi that runs right? I haven't. Don't comment, don't comment about this video on me. This is all Brendan. <laughs> all the slander is from Brendan. Now, admittedly, it's not a performance machine. It's a little bit soft, a little bit wallowy. I think it's freaking cool. Look at the crazy headlight design and the huge wing and you got these louvers in the side and the shifter and it's just awesome. This is a cool car and it's going to go for a tiny amount of money. What do you think it's going to sell for at auction? Oh gosh, I don't know. I know that I wouldn't buy it, but <laughs> it, I guess if I had to predict on it, it'd maybe be 5,000 bucks. I think you might be a little ambitious. Yeah. I'm going to go $4,400 on the SL Mitsubishi, even though it's got quad exhausts. It's only I'm, got 79,000 miles, Tom. I know. I'm going to say 1000 bucks per exhaust pipe, 4400 bucks. Okay, right. that's not great math, but 4400 <laughs> Let's see. So, Brendan, I wasn't around to go to the auction, but you were. You filmed the action. So, what happened when that Mitsubishi went across the block? Yeah, so uh, we were both a little bit low on that guy, actually. I guess they've gone up in value a little more than I thought, and it ended up selling, opening, well, let's see, it opened at $5,000, cool. and it sold at $6,500 on it. We were both pretty low, but I was the higher of the two, so... I'll take the win. Nice. Wow, that's pretty good money for a front-wheel drive automatic 3000 GT. I'd say so. I certainly wouldn't pay that for it, but <laughs> somebody did. <laughs> and Brendan, boy, do I have a humdinger for you. One of the biggest turds, in my opinion, ever to hit the North American streets. We have the Chevrolet Aveo. You really don't like these that much? So here's the deal. I love cheap cars. I love the classic Beetle, I love the old Fiat, I love old Citroens, I love even the Corolla, right? But I love cars that are designed with the purpose and with quality and cars that aren't designed just to be as cheap as physically possible with no concessions, concessions towards style or performance or reliability or design or want to be in them. And the Aveo, <laughs> it's just a little turd box. Well, that's kind of what makes this so appealing. It's just a cheap, little crummy little car that you can drive around get door dings on it and thrash on it and who cares it's never going to be reliable no it this is this is okay what's the story with this car this was <laughs> this was a car that was designed in conjunction <laughs> with a south korean brand right yeah so this was designed uh and actually built by daewoo if you guys remember they were sold in the states very briefly they're History in the U.S. is very uh, short-lived. It isn't though, because they built this turd. That's true. And, for, yeah. and they kept building this turd. <laughs> they couldn't make it as a as a name brand in the U.S. So Chevy decided, well, you want to make some cheap economy cars for us instead, and so this is what they delivered. <laughs> Brendan, it's just pop the hood. Let's see what's under the hood. Yeah. This was actually manufactured. Uh, for a bunch of brands, right? You can get them under Holden, you can get them under Suzuki, a whole bunch of different brands sold across the world as just cheap, reliable-ish transportation. Yeah, you know, I give this car a lot of heck, but actually people I've talked to say that this car is fairly reliable. 
as terrible as the inside and the outside and everything is, apparently they do last a long time. So what we're looking at is a 1.6 liter, four cylinder, 16 valves, apparently dual overhead cam with how much horsepower? Yeah, these had, uh, I think, what, around 103 horsepower back in the day. So, I mean, you know, you're not getting a performance machine, although these are pretty light, so you would be surprised I will at not. how quick these are. And I in will fact, not Tommy, be surprised. I, I, think, I think you should be the one to drive this because you will be surprised at how fun this is to take around. Now, here's the thing. The replacement to the Aveo was the Sonic, and yep. I love the Sonic, especially the Sonic Turbo is a fun little car. And I think those are made by Daewoo as well. I, you know they might be, but I know the Spark was. I don't know about the Sonic. But the Sonic manual transmission, um, turbocharged engine, cool design, cool interior. This though, that's not painted. The hubcap, it just faded. What the <laughs> heck? Now along the side you get one sad little General Motors badge there. And that is the end of the cool things on the outside of the Avail. Well yeah, I mean it's the gas store. Somebody has taken it with them and the, uh, the A no longer wants to be a part of it, so it's just a Veo. So it's it's not an a Veo, it's just a Veo. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, it's not the worst. It is the worst looking car I've ever seen. But why don't you hop in the driver's side and we'll show them through the interior. This is where things go from bad to exceptionally bad. First of all, the doors, they're like three centimeters thick and they feel terrible. But every plastic in here feels like it came straight out of a Happy Meal toy. Everything you touch is the cheapest, the worst plastic, the stocks, the buttons, the switches feel like they're about to fall. Brendan, yeah. <laughs> pitch me on the inside here. Well, I mean, you get this little slot here for your, uh, your parking tickets because you're gonna be driving this in the city and these seats have this cool little 90s looking design in them. You get an armrest. Yeah, you get one armrest. That's pretty nice. And you can get it with a manual transmission. So no worrying about a CVT or anything like that. You can get this with a stick shift and row your own. It's like stirring porridge. 90 <laughs> seats, but this is an 07. No AC on this model. Um, look, I mean, look at this door panel. Like you got, I like manual windows, but somehow I dislike this manual window. That's crap. That's crap. That's some kind of prehistoric sex toy. Okay. We'll but have you, have you never seen manual uh, uh, side mirrors, Tommy? But come I've, on. I've never seen it made out of the same material that you use those little nubs that come with packing peanuts that you throw away. That's, that's incredible. Anyway, we'll get it on the road. Maybe it'll drive well. Spoiler alert, it won't. I think you'll be surprised. It's, I think you need to drive it, Tommy. Great. So are you ready to experience the zippiness and funness of a cheap little Daewoo? I will say, it does have a tachometer. Yeah. And it's got cup holders. Hang on, we gotta show they, those. They were kind of hidden there, but it what does. The, what is this for? It's a square. <laughs> that's that's for your kid's juice box. Oh, so it can fit right goodness. there, right? Steering wheel, crap. Stocks, crap. Gauges are good though. I do like the gauges. Did you see that? I said something nice. You did. Now, Congratulations. <laughs> let's see how the <laughs> transmission works. Little five-speed managed transmission. Clutch feels really good, actually. Yeah. Um, I will say, we're two pretty big guys. I'm six feet tall. You're pretty tall, too. Lots of space in here. There is lots of space. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people want a fast car, right? They want something super quick and fast and things like that. But that's dangerous sometimes, right? If you want to drive <laughs> is it a dangerous? truly fast car fast, that is where you get speeding tickets and you do things that you shouldn't do and that get you in trouble and thrown in jail. But if you get a cheap car that's slow and drive that fast, then it's not as dangerous, but yet just as equally fun. Let's see how the engine is. I am actually kind of excited for this. This could be kind of fun. Ready? Let's do it. First gear, full throttle. Actually though, rev it all the way up to 6,000. Yeah. Look at that, see? <laughs> It's not so terrible. It's kind of a rev happy little engine, actually. They get is. this thing on boil. That's not bad. You know, I hate this car, but I do kind of want it. <laughs> you know, because it is, I mean, it's it's terrible. I mean, the quality materials in here are the worst I've felt in any car. And that's including some Soviet era cars. This is this is this is down there. But um, at the same time, there's something just very honest and kind of happy about it. Exactly. They you weren't know? trying to hide anything. They weren't trying to oversell you on what the Chevy Aveo was. It was just a car and 
period you know, just and end it got there you it was just a car yeah <laughs> i actually like it yeah you know what yeah you believe it or not you have sold me on one of my most hated cars <laughs> hey, hey look at that all right let's go find out whether or not we're gonna buy or bust it and what this uh little heap is gonna sell for at auction sounds good so brendan the oh. chevy aveo is this gonna be a buy or a bust you know i i know this started out as a bust for you 100 percent. but I have always been a buy on these because nobody knows about them. Nobody looks at these, they just keep walking right past, and in turn, they go for super cheap. Okay. So I'm gonna say buy. I'm gonna, I, I don't know why, but I'm gonna say buy as well. Oh, I won you over. You did, you did. You took one of my least favorite cars. It's kind of fun. With yeah, the manual transmission. these are surprising, aren't they? Yeah, the interior is so bad, it's almost funny. So I'm going to predict at auction, this car will sell for Sixteen hundred dollars. Sixteen hundred dollars. I think, I think that's a little low, Tommy. This has got under a hundred thousand miles, and it's a two thousand seven car. Uh, so, so I think this could fetch three grand at three auction. Three grand. Three grand the at best? auction. Yes. Oh no, it's a bust again. <laughs> All right, Brendan, so next up we have the little dog pile of the Chevrolet Aveo, and I did not have a high prediction on this car. What happened when it went across the block? Yeah, so uh, I think maybe I'm the only person in the world interested in this car because it opened up at $1,200, and everybody was just kind of ho-hum and not really interested, eventually ending up and selling for $1,400. bucks. So, 1400 uh, your guess was sixteen hundred. Mine was three grand. Apparently, I was nuts, <laughs> and uh, you were pretty close to the number. So, you take the win there. <laughs> I take the win on that one. That's for sure. Yep. All right, and for our joint pick, Tommy uh, went and grabbed this, and I think uh, this might be one we agree on. So, what'd you bring us, Tommy? So, this is the Nissan Leaf a Gen 1 Nissan Leaf. And it's not the car so much I dislike, it's what this car has done to the public perception of electric cars in general that I hate about the first generation Nissan Leaf. Now this car was actually extremely groundbreaking because you gotta figure prior to like 2010, 2011, 2012, the only EVs on the market were stuff like the Tesla Roadster, which was insanely fast, had long range, but was also extremely expensive. And then you had like the Model S, which came out for the 2012 model year, and that was a great car, right? But high range, high price. The Nissan Leaf wanted to bring electrification to the masses, and it did, but at a huge cost. Yeah, and this is under that Carlos Ghosn era, right? Yeah. Where he was building everything as cheap as humanly possible, regardless of what it did to the reputation of Nissan. And in turn, uh, I think a lot of these mid-2000s Nissans, I think just Nissans in general from this era tend to be a lot less reliable. So here's the thing about the Leaf, right? And I've read and I've heard that Carlos Ghosn's main objective with the Leaf was to be profitable from day one. So a lot of EVs, especially like the compliance cars, uh, the manufacturers were losing money hand over fist, but they needed the, the tax credit, so they wanted to go with it. Nissan apparently wanted this car to be a sales hit and a moneymaker from the get-go, so they cut a lot of corners. And the biggest corner they cut is the worst corner to cut, the battery. Yeah, and I think these had about, what, 76 miles of range when new? So this is a 2012, this is a really early Leaf. It was officially rated at 73 miles of range, according to the EPA. Okay. Now that alone is pretty bad. Yeah. But what gained these cars such a terrible reputation was the battery degradation. Now, don't get me wrong. The vast majority of cars on the market, EVs on the market, um, have very minimal battery degradation because they are liquid cooled batteries. And if you look at Teslas, even the early Teslas, oftentimes, 10 years old, right? Eight years old. Yeah. They'll still be at 90% of their original capacity. Well, and this one's about 10 years old. So about how much left of the capacity do you think is on this thing? About 50%. Holy cow, that's terrible. So this is basically a car that can only go maybe 35 miles before you start quaking in your boots thinking you're gonna get stranded somewhere? That's right. And the downfall to the Nissan Leaf was the air-cooled battery. So batteries are like us. They want to be at room temperature. They don't do well when it gets cold and they really don't do well when they get hot and that's when they start to degrade. And this car, fast charging, especially in climates like Arizona, you fast charge this thing a few too many times and that battery health is gonna take a nosedive. Now these did have a long battery warranty, but we're well out of that now. So you'd yeah. be on the hook for a new battery sensor on this car to make it usable. So it's essentially mechanically totaled then if you had to put the batteries in this thing. It is mechanically totaled, oh, but at gosh. least it's ugly. 
<laughs> you know, it's not an attractive car. Yeah, and at least the interior quality is terrible as well. well. Let's take a look. Yeah. Now, like I said, this is a really early leaf, and I believe all these early leaves came in kind of this gray colored um, material on the seating surfaces. And it's actually a very comfortable seat, and you do have some nice features in here, like heated seats and a heated steering wheel, because Nissan realized it was more efficient to heat the cabin versus the seats and the steering wheel than via um, the climate control. Let's start it up here, see if it'll start up. Now, I'm also noticing a couple other things. First of all, um, it's completely out of charge. And this is how you know the battery health on a Leaf. You see these little bars right here, Cole, on the right side of the gauge cluster? Now, Leafs originally came with 12 bars. Um, the, the warranty would replace the battery at eight bars or under. This one's sitting at seven with, of course, no battery warranty remaining. And of course, because of the dealer auction, it's completely out of charge, like completely out of charge. Uh, Man, <laughs> so, that's terrible, Tommy. Yeah, we're not doing so hot here. Uh, well, it's basically, the dealership was probably 30 miles away from from uh, the, the auction, they had to go drop it <laughs> off and then it was out of charge. It was yeah. fully charged when they left. You have some cool things though, like this funky shifter, right? I always thought this was cool. In the gauge cluster, it would actually build a tree as you drive along. So if you're driving effectively, it would build a tree. Now we're gonna take it for the world's shortest test drive because I don't want to get stranded here with zero miles of range remaining. But well, let's see how it drives. Brendan, you like the inside of the leaf? Oh, tell me, I don't know. This thing is, this thing is rough. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the cost cutting every little bit with all these like cheap plastics and this weird little shifter and like this this armrest is wearing out wait why aren't we moving it has no charge in it so you literally can't even move from this spot i can but we're gonna <laughs> maybe we should just take it back to the parking spot instead of going on the test track with this thing it's, i don't know it's in turtle mode brendan oh my gosh it's in turtle mode all right we'll take it back to the it moves it, it's yeah, quiet. sure. It moves. So, yeah, so is, uh, I don't know, like a little golf cart or, you know, like, like those little uh, kids' toy cars you can get. Yeah, yeah. Probably have about the same amount of range. Yeah, yeah. All right. We'll, 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 we'll park it up. Yeah, okay. I don't want to get stranded on the test track. That's yeah. No good. <laughs> so, Brendan, is this car going to be a buy or a bust? I mean, you can go farther in a golf cart, Tommy. Huh? <laughs> this has got to be a bust. I completely disagree. This is a buy for me. What? It Are is. you nuts? It's a buy for me. What, so you could take out the batteries and throw a traditional engine in there or something? No. <laughs> so the thing about Leaf batteries, the headlines were all 30 grand to replace the batteries. That wasn't true. It was actually much more affordable. So you could probably refresh this pack for several thousand, which is still more than the car's worth. But here's why I'd buy it. Because it's a few thousand dollars I think it's going to sell for. You go 35 miles of range, cut it up, turn it into a pickup truck, use this to go to the grocery store only, right? You could have this as kind of like a little runabout for two grand or whatever. And I think it might be worth I, it. I think you're going to be surprised at how expensive even this thing with only 35 miles of range is going to go for. So what do you what do you really think that this is going to sell for at auction? 20, 2200 bucks. So at $2,200, you would be a buyer? I would. Well, this one, okay, another thing, this one's clearly been in an accident in the rear, like <laughs> yeah. the paint's chipping off. At a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks, I'd be a buyer, but I think it's gonna sell for twenty two hundred. You think it's gonna sell? All right. Yeah. I think that this is actually gonna fetch a little bit more, a little bit more money because I don't think people have kind of caught on yet as to why these are so terrible, and they just look at it as, oh, cool, I can have an electric car that I can offer on my lot, and I think a dealer is probably gonna snag this thing for closer to five thousand dollars. Five grand. Yes, and I think at five thousand dollars, you should be running away from this thing, yeah. not walking away from it. But at fifteen hundred bucks, maybe. Here's maybe. the thing. I. While we're here, this car is so out of power. I think by the time that all the dealers are done driving this thing today, it's gonna be dead. So it may not even go across so the block. So it may not even go across the block, in which case it will go for cheap. That's true. You could have the advantage there. If somebody is pushing this thing across the block, well, I guess we'll find out. Brendan, next up we have the Nissan Leaf. And what happened when this thing went across the block? Yeah, so uh, as soon as everybody saw that thing walk across the auction block, they all just kind of walked the other direction. Nobody had any interest in that thing. The uh, Did, it, did it have enough tri like charge to drive into the auction block? It did. Oh, it actually good. drove over the auction block uh, and <laughs> Yeah, so the auctioneer opened it at 4,000 bucks and was looking around and like, come on guys, this thing is like 50 something thousand miles. Anybody? Oh, come on, well, let's do 3,000, please. Somebody bid. And then eventually he just gave up and said, all right, get it out the door. And it did that. It just it, yeah. spazzed out. It just spazzed out and uh, 
no one even bid on it a little bit. No one even threw up like, I'll give you a thousand bucks for it. Like it literally, no one wanted anything to do with that car. I would have given, no, I wouldn't have, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so what? So it didn't get any bids. So technically I got to win, you got to win. We also both lose. So we both lose. Yeah, Yeah, because no one bid. That was their tiebreaker, and no one bid on it. I know. So I don't know what to do there. Yeah, okay. Well, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. As always, it's been Tommy. And Brendan. We'll see you in another episode of the TFL Classics Buyer Bus Series.